a pretty solid step. I'm not going to call it a massive step, but it's a very it's a positive step in the right direction. Now, if we do a similarly sized step into the next season, I mean, we're talking about the college football playoff, are we not? Like, I mean, we go from six and seven getting blanked in a bowl game to a school nobody's ever heard of to we're playing in a decent, OK bowl game against a respectable opponent. Right. Yeah. We could make another step next year and be. I'm not going to say college football playoff. I, I shouldn't have said that. That was that was a little bit too much, maybe. But like if we are floating around like the six to eight range, talking about a New Year six bowl game. Yeah, we are excited to play in the Orange Bowl against whoever we play because we feel confident we're going to beat the dog shit out of them. Then, yeah, great. I, I would say that's fine. But also, again, reasonable expectations. We're going to be having a lot of freshmen getting some burn next year. Yeah. Uh, and, and I get what you're saying. You know, I. I'm having a hard time with that that question, I guess. Um, right now, I'm not super excited. I actually think that we – I don't think playoffs is ridiculous next year. Now, do, does that mean I think we'll have a good showing in the playoffs? Um, I wouldn't go as far to, to say that. However – Hell, Notre Dame's about to get blown the fuck out <laughs> in the next yeah. couple of days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all right. Making the CFP, making the CFP is one thing. Doing something when you're there is another. Because Notre Dame's yeah. about to get smoked in a few days. Yes, I, I mean the door is open, right? Like we are returning, um, Derek King, who pound for pound is probably our best player, and you know, like we have, uh, I mean, with Trevor Lawrence going, and you know, like like Clemson is now a question mark at the top of the ACC. They'll probably likely repeat as the best team, um, but you you have to say that we're in that mix with North Carolina and Clemson is is legitimate uh, contenders to win the ACC, and you know if that's a one loss team, then we're probably getting into the playoffs. So you know I don't think it's unreasonable to say that there's a chance we get into the playoff. Um, I wouldn't go as so far as to say that like you know that we would be competitive against Ohio State or Alabama or whoever else is good next year. Um, But it's there. But I I guess I would feel much more, like, comfortable with the future as soon as, like, we get a read on the quarterback room after Derek King. Because he's so good. It's hard to – it's – Oh, Jordan, you're torturing yourself right now. <laughs> I, I, I know. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to give you guys my thought process here, right? Because I'm I'm kind of expecting, like, a 10-2 and two season next year, um, which, you know, would be progress. But the problem is, like, then what happens after Derek King goes? You know, because... Well, that, well that's, that, that's, the, that's the point of getting, you know, a, well, TVD will be in his third year, and then, hope, you know, Jake Garcia is going to be battling him. You know, I... That's why we we recruit these guys. For sure. For sure. I'm I'm just saying like when it comes to am I excited about the future or not, it's like I will sleep a lot better at night if like say say Tyler Van Dyke gets some burn tomorrow and looks great. <laughs> I I will start to feel a little more comfortable. But I mean this year's team I mean tell me if you guys think I'm wrong here, but this year's team kind of showed to me that Derek King was our tent pole. You know, I, I kind of felt like he propped a mediocre team up to a above average level. What's there to correct? Yeah. And, and so yeah, the thing is like, correct? yeah. And, and so like, if we're not, if we're not getting good player development and then Derek King leaves, like, is our program any better than the day before he got here? And, and that's kind of my that's hesit- go get another QB in the portal if need be. Uh, I mean, how many of those dudes are scoring 50 touchdowns a year? You know, like no, I, I I hear what you're saying. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't want to poo hoo it. I'm not I'm not trying to doomsday and say like you know Manny sucks. This is you know I'm that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is like I I just you know to me there's too many question marks. We relied too heavily on a short-term rental for me to be confident in the future. If that makes sense. 
Does that make sense yeah. what I'm saying? But I, I, well, I mean, I, 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 hey, man, I if, if Tyler Van Dyke's not ready after effectively what will become two red shirt seasons, if he's not ready, then, yeah, you know, you, you kind of have to ask. You, you say the same thing about, like, professionals. I, I'm not, you know, not that he's held to those same standards, but you say the same kind of thing about professional athletes. If you're not the guy after you've been in the program for two full years and, you know, coming up on your third year and you're not really showing us any signs, then, like, were you ever the guy to begin with, you know? So if TVD, I I like him. I've seen him throw the ball. Guy looks like a stud. I think he's going to be a good player. Yeah. But, you know, if the coaching staff after Derek King is gone next season is sitting there going like, Hmm. Do we need to hit the portal or do we want to roll the dice on TVD or Garcia? Then it's kind of like, well, was TVD ever the guy to begin with? You know? Yeah. I, uh, I, I also think that's what a lot of programs are thinking whenever they have, you know, a junior or senior quarterback, though, you know, anyway, you know, they're already looking yeah. towards the future thinking, oh, like who's going to replace, you know, it's not very often that Trevor Lawrence is going to be replaced by the, you know, that Hawaiian guy. Um, yeah, we have a sure fire backup in yeah. you know, eating in, in the in the ring. So I, yeah, it, it's hard to just look that far. And I mean, we it is it yeah. is. It, and and let me admit, full disclosure, that opinion of mine and that doubt is heavily affected by our past. Right. Yeah. And the past isn't always the best predictor of the future. It can be. But it like you can't live and die by that. Right. Because, you know, like things change, right? So just because, you know, Kyle Wright and Robert Marv and Ja'Cory Harris and, uh, you know, Stephen Morris and to some extent Brad Kaya and, you know, all, all these other guys, Nikozi Perry, Jaron Williams, like highly rated guys that came in here and we didn't achieve the success that we wanted as a team on the back of highly rated recruits. Like that doesn't that that doesn't write Tyler Van Dyke's story, right? But as a fan, I think it's not unreasonable to have some PTSD about it. No, no. I, I hey, if anyone has PT uh, PTSD about the Canes, it's it's, it's <laughs> yeah. me. Like I, I it's been a rough ass fifteen twenty years. But I, it, it also, has been also born in the having darkness. a guy like. What? Right. Marsh was Marsh was born in the darkness, molded by it. Yeah, exactly. I've just been tortured by my sports team. So I I, I try to uh, present a confident, enthusiastic outlook. I'm sometimes bullshitting it. I'll be completely honest. But this, I'm I'm really like I'm really not like even like and I'm and you guys know I am not afraid to to call it out. You know when when need be. I mean like I. When in 2018, when the Canes were, you know, preseason eight with Mark Richt and everything, I was like, this team is not very good. Just wait. Like, I'm yeah. not – this isn't going to end well, and then look what happened. So – but right now, especially with a guy like Rhett Lashley staying for at least one more year, you have, you know, these assistant coaches and in, in Justice, especially Likens. Likens. And Likens is the man. Yeah. Likens is the man. It, and it'll – it will help a lot um, depending on what changes are made defensively. Because if you don't make changes, at least get rid of at least two coaches on the defensive side. If you can't do that, then, you know, maybe I'll, I'm, I'm still a little bit worried about where we're going and about, you know, what we can accomplish. But the, the fact that we got Ed Reed up there, you know, consulting Manny and everything like that. I feel like that helps a lot. And I don't think, you know, enough people are talking about his impact and, you know, just, you know, his voice of reason, everything. So do I think Manny is going to be the guy that wins a national championship for Miami? No, I've never thought that. Is he going to get the guy, is he going to be the guy to bring Miami to a place where they can start competing for them and, and get us back to relevancy? Yes, I do. So, but it, it takes time, and I know that, yeah. but that's the biggest. That's the biggest thing to that Canes fans hate is that they don't want to wait. They they want to be back in the heyday, and I, I don't need to know yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I I think the the problem, and you know what, it could be something that we do to ourselves, right? Like how how many times do we say that you know the Miami like 
the Miami Hurricanes are the kings of the off season, right? Like we, <laughs> you know, we we do so many victory laps every off season about how good things look, and and then it usually just explodes in our face like horribly. Um, so maybe maybe we set ourselves up for failure, you know, because there was a Zoom last night, um, you know, of a few Canes fans that were talking and. And, you know, I, I brought up like, well, you know, we, we pretty much have a top 20 recruiting class every year. Like, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect a top 20 team, you know, like, like Petrie, you brought up Wisconsin, you know, we're, we're recruiting the doors off of Wisconsin. And yet, why are they putting a better team on the field every year? And, you know, one of the, one of the responses, and, and not that I take issue with it, I, I do not take issue with this response, because I think it's valid and fair. And it was like, you know, you need to get the right guys. It, it doesn't just have to be highly rated dudes. It has to be the right guys physically and mentally for the program. Mm. I don't take issue with that answer. There's nothing wrong with it. However, do you remember what I said, Jordan? No. <laughs> I, I can't remember what your reply was to that. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, no, no, you're fine. But but my my response to that is, well, then then what are we doing getting so gassed up about these high recruiting classes then? before any of them step on the field you know like i can see that I can does, see. does that make sense like like yeah, you gotta but... you gotta cut things straight you know and and saying that manny is the guy because of a top 10 recruiting class like it's hard to say that at the same time of is saying you know well our past recruits that just because they were highly rated doesn't mean they were the right guy you know like like it's hard to say both of those things and have um what's it called continuity in your logic and, and so you know maybe we are doing this to ourselves that we're hyping up the wrong things you know we're getting too excited about recruiting classes we're getting too excited about transfer portal stuff and we really just need to rely on the results uh like on the football field right because at the end of the day that's what's more important you know no i i, I think no that's a very good point i mean a lot of people get mad at me that because, you know, James Williams and Cam Kitchens, I, I couldn't be more excited to see them play. But I'm saying it right now. They're not going to become the players that they can be yeah. with a guy like Coach Banda coaching safeties. And I think that's the that's the case with a, a few of these yeah. um, players. And, and can I bring up another point? And this kind of has nothing to do or it kind of has something to do. But you know what really grinds my gears about Miami Hurricanes fans is that we have gotten so accustomed to thinking true freshmen are going to come in and just take over. Like I posted yeah. something about Mike Harley today saying I, how I hope that he comes back. And he goes like, no, nah, he's got to leave. Like Brashard and X got to eat. I'm like, okay, if, okay, if they're going to do it, then why don't they all just, you know, compete for it? And the best man wins. Like why, why are we going to put all of this pressure and responsibility on these 18-year-olds to come in and immediately – change the culture at Miami and, and change us into a, a perennial powerhouse. I mean, I understand that James Williams is good. He will play as a true freshman. Uh, Leonard Taylor will play as a true freshman. But people coming in and saying, this guy will start day one, and this guy, I'm like, what the hell? Like, why yeah. are you? Why do you continue to do this to yourself? <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, to me, the, the, like, the point that, that resonates the most with me from what you just said is the culture thing. You know, we talked about this last episode, and that I don't like the idea of bringing in freshmen to change your culture, right? Because those kids have never, they've never played college ball, man. <laughs> I mean, do you guys remember your first year at college or your first month at college, what it was like? It's very and how you blurry, just, very yeah, blurry. you did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just kind of walk around like a deer in the headlights, like, okay, what do I do now? I've never done this before, you know? Like, so, so why are we? You know, why why are we expecting true freshmen to come in and like throw down the gauntlet on a scene on a senior and be like, we're doing like I'm the captain now, you know, like yeah. some Captain I mean, Phillips type stuff. Like, it's just I mean, not going to happen. We were, all, we were all so excited like this past year for guys like TVD and uh, X to come in. And rightfully so. I think those guys are the kind of players that you need more of in your locker room. But we are not going to come in on Green Tree and then like these juniors and seniors are going to look up at them like they just walked on water and say, oh, I'm going to follow you, whatever you do. Like this yep. takes time. 
Like, what, yeah. what, like, do you think it, like they're just gonna like? Do you think Restrepo was gonna come in like out year one, catch seventy passes for twelve hundred yards? Like, did you like did you?